Good morning to you. Morning, Spencer. Good morning. We are now going to find out what's going on with the Port of Shelton at portofshelton.com with Dick Taylor and Wendy Smith. Good morning, y'all. How you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Super. Well, I know you guys have got some uh, big time conversations coming up this week at your retreat. What normally happens at these types of uh, events? You guys well, we, hammer through you know, a bunch of things? Get, yeah, we, well, we don't hammer through. It's, <laughs> it's open discussions is what it is. And, mm -hmm. and the way we like to set it up is we'll set up uh, or come up with a series of topics we want to talk about. And all three commissioners put in on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, Wendy sets up an agenda and a and it's scheduled on how to do that and uh, that's what we do and we sit down and, we, and it's open discussion no decisions are made so are these, these uh, like retreats. wish list types of things that you can guys can be had? okay can be it can be uh, strategic planning for you know forward looking stuff that you want to think about way out in the future and stuff that's happening tomorrow yeah kind of thing that you can look at and how you blend that all together and and prior, prioritize what you're looking at. Could you share some past thoughts that went to fruition from these retreats sure. that you can think of? Sure. The big one is the sale of the marina. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the most Discussions recent one. On, yep. and, and so this year, I think the big, the big topic would be um, prioritizing, as you know, we're full. You know, we have, yeah. we have no space. Um, so when we get phone calls, you know, we turn people away or we have tenants that need expansion, we can't do that. So I think from the commission's mindset, and of course they set the policy for us to drive, um, what do we do first? So we, we probably are gonna be prioritizing the big things. So I've been meeting with some of the tenants that have expressed need for future expansion. I've been talking to others that have just needs um, as well as kind of logging you know who's been calling um, and so I think what you'll see coming out of this is just some some prioritization on what what we should do you know I think building buildings at this point is probably really smart you've got so. all sorts of sizes of business there yep. is that um, lend itself to getting calls from all types of interested they hear oh well they're at the port of shell now oh, we got you know uh, 17,000 square feet or oh well, we were out there and we got 5,000 square feet oh for man sure. that fits everybody yeah, yeah for exactly. sure even ones you know through commerce that call EDC and they get you know notice and they don't even really know who it is or what they are uh -huh. um, and sometimes it's like west of the Mississippi or you know um, or just state of Washington but um, they'll they're looking sometimes for 300,000 square feet you know Whoa. which we don't have but we have ability to build sure or they could build or we have land and so yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of all over the board. And I think we've got so many 5,000 square foot buildings that I guess I'm kind of thinking that um, in my mind, you know, let the commission decide, but um, maybe we build bigger, a little bit bigger. You know, maybe we build something that we could wall off and have, you know, two tenants. So maybe a 20,000 yeah. and have oh, two 10,000 yeah. or, you know, if needed, uh -huh. or maybe someone wants the 20 or, you know, maybe you do 20 and you divide it four ways. It's, it's not as cheap. Um, because you're, you know, you have power set up and all that. We have a lot of shared build, or we've reduced our shared buildings. But over time, with our big hangars that are, you know, vintage World War II. Um, we have shared tenant space and what gets hard is when the old wiring is in there you know we have a pud bill that we have to split in some fashion or oh, figure out a percentage yeah. of who or it's half and half you know and it's just it's just harder um so we prefer not to do that so if we set it up right and we knew um and other ports have done this it's not anything yeah it's not bent the wheel again yeah, yeah so i've been talking to um yesterday i had a phone conversation with kilmer's office um and his staff and and talking about funding opportunities that are out there um for for ports in particular um and there are some um there's more for private business so if you had your business in hand or that tenant that wanted to expand and they could go forward and get more funding opportunities we also are lucky that in sanderson were um the whole um, part of Sanderson Field is in the Opportunity Zone. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge incentive for people that are looking to expand or build or come to port property. That's for their investors. That's where they get tax breaks for, you know, the 10 year period or however it works. I'm not super familiar, but I just got a great PowerPoint on it. And 
So that kind of incentive is what people look for and why they want to locate um, at ports, for instance. So I mean, you guys are pretty busy with the Washington Public Ports Association. Mm -hmm. yep. So how does that work? Is there a regional organization of public ports and then the federal is there a federal department that overlooks these as well that would be able it's to... It's not really a department, but there is no. an association, a uh -huh. federal one. We aren't nearly as involved. Some of the larger ports, I know Grace Harbor, um, and, Seattle, and then Seattle, yeah, 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 Port of Tacoma. Seattle, they're involved, and even probably Port of Vancouver in the more federal, regional um, public port association. It's called American, or... I can't remember. It called? It's, yeah. it's an A association of... Anyway... But it's and they, you know, look worldwide. Um, sure. So so we could involve ourselves at this point, you know, being a part of the state um, association is is worthwhile. Um, some of the members I talked to yesterday, one was from the national. Um, I'm going to get this wrong, but so national development council. So it's like our local EDC. She's from, you know, more of a widespread national uh -huh. representative of that um, as well as funding sources come from the feds um, a lot of them come from the economic development authority that's federal so very similar to our own mason edc just in a broader scale when so. it comes to um, benefits for a business to come to the port i know the edc and you guys do work hard on sending out those notes to people who ask but what are some of the the main benefits of locating in Shelton on Sanderson Field or Johns Prairie, and we talk a lot about how there's um, a lot of low cost energy over in Eastern Washington because of uh, the dams and BPA and things like that. But I do know too with PUD three, and they have a lot of that energy come our mm -hmm. way too. Mm -hmm. So s some of those power, um, perhaps a little cheaper on power for people, and then fiber off. Fiber optics, obviously, right. well, is a yeah, we, thing. Yeah, and, the port is wired. Yeah. We've got all that out there, in both at Johns Ferry and... Um, is that um, Sanderson Field. unusual for a port of your size to have that type of technology? Be. I think can it be. can be. Yeah, I think we're, we're probably of the small, you know, and if you kind of split the, all the ports in Washington in half, we're like right in the middle. In the middle. We're like the small of the big, but we're the big of the small. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so, yeah. um, but we've been lucky with with the forethinking of PUD3 and then Hood Canal and just all the groups that are form formulating when all the, the broadband stuff came forward. I yeah. mean, we're like, well, we don't need that. You know, we've got that. Right. Um, also, just PUD3, you know, just yesterday we were mentioning to um, a tenant on the phone that, you know, we're lucky at Sanderson Field and at Johns Prairie, but particularly Sanderson Field, they're set up for like dual. I mean, they've got capacity to serve one way, and then and then basically if that went down, the backup coming yeah. in the other way. So I mean, we're pretty wired, and and like we heard at the when we talked about the emergency meeting we had months ago, mm -hmm. like in I guess it was in December, yeah. um, with FEMA and the different groups. Um, they were surprised at you know the fuel we have on site. So we've got things that you know, maybe would help, a tr you know, trucks leaving someone, the fuel's right there, we have the airport, mm -hmm. um, we have the rail line, so we have different things. But as far as incentives, what ports really have to offer is that we're, we're there to not necessarily make large dollars, but to provide a place for people to start um, or continue to grow either way. Um, but we offer cheaper rates um, because we have the infrastructure and we have the ability to get these inexpensive loans or grants yeah. that can fund those things to put them in place. So when you come and you say, well, I want to, you know, you have land, I want to build a building. You know, the land rate's one thing, but you're building your building. Well, we've got all this stuff there for you to build it to, you know, so, or we'll put it in. Uh -huh. That's part of what mm -hmm. we do. Huh. So there is good incentive. And I think if you're not tied to feeling like you want to own your business or own your, own your building or property. own your property, you know, you're even more um, set up to succeed in that realm. And so. that's also a setback in one case for us. I mean, because there are companies and businesses that want to own the land. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, at Sanderson, at uh, Johns Ferry, it's, it's relatively easy. We can sell the land relatively mm -hmm. easily. But at Sanderson Field, it's a different story. It's federal. FAA. Controlled. Oh, yeah, that's going to uh, be a nightmare, I'm sure, to so get through all that. I don't think they'd want us to. Yeah, well. they, don't, they wouldn't want us to. Yeah. And if we did, we wouldn't get the money for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It would go back to the federal government. True.
Huh. So, well, have a good retreat on Friday. Yeah, looking awesome. forward to it. Make, make lots of conversations, no decisions. <laughs> 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 Dick Taylor and Wendy Smith from the Port of Shelton at portofshelton.com. It's eight.